hello everyone welcome to the show as we have started karthikeyan murli is seeing something on the side i think or maybe his uh, camera is stuck uh, i am not sure which is the case so anyway welcome karthikeyan uh, this is the second time you are coming on the show one second <laughs> yeah you are back i think there is some delay in your video Uh, yeah Hello? okay so for some reason you are stuck one second ah maybe my internet is stuck yeah you are stuck in google meet as well yeah now it's fine so anyway welcome to the show you are uh, on Hello? the sh- uh, you are the i mean you are the second guest to come on this show twice i think if i'm not wrong so anyway how are you feeling to be on this show i'm feeling very excited now <laughs> excited uh, okay yeah, i'm there was re- some yeah <laughs> there was some trouble in the start but now it's fine i think yeah i'm really nervous i don't know if you are nervous or not <laughs> so anyway i'm not nervous okay yes <laughs> I love you and so many interviews. So this is not in front. But okay, this is the first time I'm interviewing someone, so I'm very, very okay. nervous. So anyway, let's get okay. started. Like you have uh, achieved so many things in your life, starting from your childhood. Mm. You have many. You have won many nationals. You have won uh, two world titles, and you have also won national championship. So how did it all start? Like. Uh, when did you start chess like how did uh, the interest start for you in chess uh, uh when i was like 6 or 7 years old my dad uh, had some operation uh, after the operation he had to take rest for like 15 days he should not go to office or like that so during those times you know my dad was feeling really bored and uh, i didn't go to school i was spending time with my dad and that time we will be playing all this you know uh, board games like ludo snake deck snake and ladder uh, business and uh, eventually we also played chess and i uh, somehow i got interested in that uh, well we told about the game chess i don't know why because maybe it's because you know it involves more calculation and it requires more mental skills more than physical skills somehow I don't know how I got interest. How I got into it, and uh, uh, I started as a promotion that time. Yeah, and the first tournament I saw you was in uh, Trishur, some rating tournament. I was unrated, and I think you were seventeen hundred or something like that. Yeah, two thousand eight, I think. Eight years. Yes. Nine. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. so like you were uh, very good uh, from the very young age so what did you do exactly in the like when you were uh, like 6 or 7 which made you like um, become better than others in your field like at uh, your own, same age group i i don't know how to answer that i didn't do anything special for that i just uh, kept on practicing I would just uh, you know uh, practice uh, chess all the time. Not all the time. Okay, and like during those days, I would be practicing around nine to ten hours a day. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I would. I would. I would, most of the time I would be in the academy. I would be staying there. I would be seeing chess. Yeah, at those times you know you don't have any commitments, no responsibilities. You are just yeah, you are just a free bird in those days. so i would be seeing chess for most of the time and somehow uh, somehow uh, i i became better i eventually you know okay uh, my training methods were uh, different like i would be practice i would be playing with my seniors i would be playing with my same age group so that i would get more experience from those players and uh, the, we would be training in all the areas not uh, Uh, specific, not specifically in some areas, but out uh, in all areas like opening, middle game, middle game. So it was uh, different. So and also I would be practicing just more those times. So that's why I think uh, I got better at this game. Yeah. So nine to ten hours means uh, you didn't go to school from the very young age, or uh, how is it? 
Uh, not uh, to the classes, but I will be attending exams those days. Uh, like uh, normally people go to school every day, but I won't go to school uh, in the uh, normal days. I will be going to, before the exams, something like that. So apart from those uh, exam days, I will be in, my, in the academy. I will be staying in the academy and I will be practicing chess. Okay, okay. And uh, coming to the, and then okay, the next time I saw you was in Shimoga in under 11 nationals where you won. Uh, I, was it your first national title or maybe? Yeah, that was my first. And uh, yeah. how was the feeling? Like, do you, did you think the hard work paid off or like how was the feeling when you won the first national? Yeah, yeah, it was good because you know I especially remember uh, before the penalty went out, uh, I was sick. I think uh, I was not well. I had some fever, I think. And uh, before the penalty went round, uh, my nose was bleeding. So <laughs> my coach said that I uh, should not play in the round, something like that. But I felt okay. I came all the way from Tamil Nadu and I can't just stop like this. I will play with the bleeding nose. I don't care. So I played the penalty went round with those uh, with the bleeding nose and uh, so few, I had fever. And I think I won the penalty went round. With uh, I don't know what was his name. I I want someone. No, I want with Dipen Dosh. Yeah. Ah, uh, Dipen. <laughs> okay. And this uh, round, I think I drew with uh, Devan Kandara. I think I don't remember. Yeah, so, I think he was the first, second seed or something. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So okay, it was very. You know, it was very proud. It was very huge for me. You know, winning the national team for the first time. I mean, you get the feeling. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, winning uh, with the, like, uh, when you are sick, you are winning the national, it means something great. So, I was very happy about it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, coming for the, like, I wanted to ask about, like, preparation for the tournament. Like, uh, mm-hmm. how did you prepare for, uh, let's say, starting with na- under 11 nationals? How did you exactly prepare before uh, the tournament? Was it uh, different from your usual preparation or did you make any... Uh, uh, like special preparation, like something new preparing against specific opponents or something. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think I was preparing for uh, special uh, for opponents specifically before, like I think two weeks before the tournament. And I don't remember exactly, but uh, I was preparing speci- for specific opponents like the Ben Bosch and uh, okay, the top players. And uh, I mean, they, it was do, it was not during the academy sessions. It was like uh, when I was training alone. In the academy, in the academy classes, I will be you know with the with my friends, with my seniors, and I will be attending group classes. So uh, this uh, specific preparation was when I was alone. Okay. So in the academy it will be general classes like in the school. And uh, for like upcoming player, like for new players, what do you recommend? Like, um, as I said, like you were very successful from the young age. So let's say if someone is starting uh, at the age of, uh, let's say seven or eight or even before, like what would you recommend uh, those players? To, like how to particularly train for a day? Like, let's say uh, they can train six to eight hours. How should they train and what should they focus on exactly? I think uh, at the initial age, you should focus on your strength first uh, because at the young age, you have more uh, energy and uh, you have more you know, enthusiasm and other things. And uh, if you focus on your strength at the young age, and I, if you excel in that, I think you can uh, focus on your weakness or what to say, uh, focus on your other areas later on. Uh, so I would suggest at first, uh, when you come to chess, you know, you'll get the feeling like, okay, I'm getting this better, like I'm playing a game better, I'm getting opening better, I'm playing the game very well, something like this. Or I can attack well, or I can defend well, something like this. So you have to figure out what area is uh, comfortable for you. And at the end, you have to train in that first. And uh, once you, you know, start progressing, then I think you have to get, uh, consider on other areas as well. Yeah, and so I would say that yeah. you engage, you should focus on strength first. Okay, and also you found this very nice academy, Bloom Chess Academy, where uh, even I think Pragnananda, Vaishali, all these players, I yeah. think others also, Muttaya, like there were many mm-hmm. others who came from this academy. 
so you definitely found yeah. a very good coach and for some people like yeah. uh, they don't have a like good coach or they don't have any coach like how do you know that uh, if you are training with the uh, right coach or like how to find the right coach for you specifically uh, i think it's just a few <laughs> i mean okay if you are uh, to some other coach i think uh, it doesn't matter because it's all within you yourself it's just it doesn't depend on the coach or the surroundings or the environment i think it uh, really depends on you how you take the things so uh, even if i didn't get a good coach okay i would have just uh, practiced myself and uh, okay of course good coach in the sense like you know we cooperate and uh, i mean i i think you can get that so i think uh, uh, getting uh, if you get good coach you will achieve if you don't get good coach if you don't if you don't get good coach you will achieve i think that's not the right thing so even even be respect of the you know uh good or bad you have to uh, be ready that's all i'm saying yeah okay my case uh, i was bit lucky to find the secretary and the fellow officer and the seniors i mean and the the uh, assistants here so yeah, i would say i was bit lucky that's all yeah and from young age uh, like i have heard and also i have seen you solving problems uh, very e- quickly and efficiently like how did you train your calculation and this was also asked uh, by tanmay srinath from chess base india who writes article for chess base india and he wanted mm-hmm. to know how you solve uh, studies quickly and and in general how to get uh, better at calculation and so on okay the when i was like i think 9 or 10 i want the calculator at all like calculation is not my area at that time so uh, people won't believe me if uh, i am bad at calculation during my engage uh yeah okay i didn't have the talent you know like uh, natural talent for chess so i thought i should work hard to excel at these things so i was like you know putting efforts uh, into calculation you know? and uh, i initially i was looking at calculation uh and i also like these things like uh, logics and uh, mathematics and uh, i mean uh, the things which needs you know like formulas and all and uh, uh, i would be spending time in mathematics as well and there will be seeing some uh, logical puzzles deductions something like this so all these things you know somehow come uh, made up for my chess calculation so i think you need to you know uh, do some brain pieces as well like uh, logical deductions some brain puzzles some like this apart from chess so it can help you in chess calculation as well okay that tip i have never heard like <laughs> solving brain pieces <laughs> and stuff and like okay. <laughs> yeah and uh, would you recommend like solving puzzles from books or like what do you recommend exactly uh i honestly i don't know uh, i don't have an answer for that i will just i can just tell uh, i can just tell what i did in my young days like in my young days those times the internet was not so popular like okay it was the, at the developing stage i would be seeing puzzles from books mostly like uh, one this this uh, game challenge uh and uh, it has more uh, puzzles in terms of calculations and uh, uh i think there were there was this uh, book i think it's bad for just puzzles yeah yeah uh, it had all this crazy stuff like you know uh, in four moves you have to read this position and uh, you know all those stuffs the like creative stuffs yeah so these were two uh, first uh, books which i remember apart from these two i think i didn't uh, have much for calculation and, and uh, out this uh, we have so many things like this uh, uh, okay there are so many objects for puzzles and you get so many you have, you have access to so many things so nowadays it's different. so i don't know i can't uh, exactly recommend uh, what to do but i did like this in doing my english 
yeah and uh, nowadays also do you train for calculation or you you think you are just too good at it and you just uh, like don't focus on it? <laughs> uh not like that no, i i want to put uh, maximum efforts on that that's all like i will train of course but uh, that's not my main goal i will be seeing some other like where i need uh, or let's say where i need to improve so calculation i will just spend like uh, around uh, 45 minutes in like that Uh, okay and um, okay so the next question is uh, like uh, one of my friend asked me like what is the easiest way f- uh, to become a title player <laughs> <laughs> if uh, becoming a title player is easy then <laughs> i think uh, it will have any value So and also yes yeah, since you were talking about hard work and talent i also had a question like whether you believe in talent or like you only believe in hard work so i guess you answered it already like in a way so ah uh, okay i even i don't remember the answer <laughs> no you were saying that uh, that you you thought you were not talented so you worked hard and so on so, yeah okay that's my case there are many talented uh, naturally talented people also like for example if you see arvind chidambaram i think he's naturally talented just yes. like uh, i know him from since his childhood uh, you know uh, most of the time i when i see him be playing uh, some video games or he'll be doing seeing some movie i never see i never saw him seeing just doing his childhood games so i think some uh, i feel that is natural talent just okay nowadays of course is seeing just but i am telling about the age yeah even uh, like i have studied uh, 12th grade with him like and also i have not seen him practice just that much uh, okay. but okay he's all uh, always good at it so mm, yeah have, so you do believe in natural talent i guess then that's the kind yeah, of yeah. and uh, okay so uh, like coming to the like recent uh, times like um, like you have reached 2600 and so like how is the work ethic change from uh, your childhood and from and now like what is the difference you feel and uh, okay the childhood uh, i work like uh, 9 to 5 hours a day because and uh, you know when you are young you have you have so much energy even if you practice in 9 to 10 hours a day you have you have enough uh, energy to play in the tournament as well like let's say you can practice for 10 days like 9 to 10 hours and uh, the last day you can play in a tournament like that but uh, nowadays i feel like you know when i practice too much uh, in my home uh, i am you know sort of losing energy like uh, as you progress the game quality is also increasing right so you need stamina for uh, for a long game as well so nowadays uh, i am also training uh, physically and mentally also uh, in terms of chess i would practice around 6 to 8 hours a day and this and uh, uh, my import, the important thing is that you know i want to have uh, energy for my game uh i tried like you know practicing for like five days uh, straight and going for a tournament but i felt that i lost more energy in my home preparation so uh nowadays i feel that i have to have energy for my game as well not only in the home preparation yeah so and you also mentioned physical training and uh, mental training very important to your success so what what are you doing uh, for that like physically and mentally okay uh, physically I, i was going to gym but nowadays you know due to the covid thing gyms are closed uh, so i'm just doing some exercises in home okay for mental uh, i will be doing yoga and meditation regularly uh Okay, I think that uh, that's enough for physic- uh, physical thing as well. But uh, adding to that, I am uh, also doing this uh, gymnastic exercises. Exercises, right? Mm-hmm. Like I have this uh, uh, what do we call this? Uh, that band you see? Yeah, band. Yeah, uh, yeah. Even I, I forgot the name. 
I forgot. I think it's Elastic World or something. I don't know. Yeah, I also uh, for, uh, forgot the name, exact name. Uh, okay. Ah, yeah, it's uh, Resistance Band. Yeah, Resistance. Ah, yeah. Yeah. You you are the one who told me that, but I think you forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I so stopped. I have to make exercises. Ah, okay, you stopped it. Yeah. Okay. So I am doing as exercises uh, with that. Yeah, and uh, like how how important is it uh, for a player to focus on physical training as well as mental training? Like some people, like uh, even uh, let's say myself, like I didn't focus on physical training that much uh, until very recently. So, like, what do you think? Uh, is it that important uh, that people should spend time on physical training and mental training? uh yes i think because uh, chess is not a normal game it requires more patience and i think it requires more toughness as well so uh, my thing is like uh, why is uh, considered physical uh, training more important is that uh, let's say if you play a long game against some player let's say if you play against some um, uh, carlson or radak let's say and uh, let's say you you give some push card on this but you can defend but i think uh, you need more toughness to defend against those guys it's not easy you know that uh, you have to defend very uh, very well and you have to sit for a long time against them so that's one thing and uh, another thing is like mentally you will get a confidence like let's say if you do physical training well you will get a confidence say like, okay my toughness is very good and i can you know for card for a long time so like this so i think it also has some effects mentally as well if you do some physical training so i would say uh, doing physical training it increases your toughness and increases in increases your confidence as well so i think in these aspects it's very important yeah and um, like generally uh, like i have played tournaments with you like we played in uh, barcelona and so on like generally mm-hmm. i thought i like i am a very confident person or something Co- coming uh, when it comes to the game but when i met you i understood that uh, like your confidence level is on different level so how do you uh, get that confidence like um, especially when it comes to chess like you are really super confident of course you are not confident in other areas but when it comes to chess you are confident so how did you get that confidence and were you this confident from childhood that uh, yeah yes uh, i was very confident uh, in, in when it comes to chess since my i think when uh, i started chess i had more confidence and also i think uh, the main important thing is is to is to you know uh, i don't know how to put it like when you work uh, efficiently and uh, when you satisfy your, your yourself i think that's enough to, to give you confidence like let's say uh, if you don't work uh, uh, if you don't practice well you will have that guilt right like okay i am not practicing well something like this and uh, when i started working uh, like uh, efficiently something like this i am i got this confidence like okay we are working well our game strength will improve something like this so this gradually increased uh as if uh, as my career improved so f- the finally you are saying that it's it be beca- it, it is because of your uh, hard work and so on because you are working so yeah. much that you you are automatically confident about the game and so on yeah. Yeah. and like for someone like let's say if someone is not conf- let's say they are playing a higher rated player and if mm-hmm. uh, if they are not confident about the game what do you recommend uh, they should do um Uh, i think i just i think you should, uh, one should just believe themselves and believe in their hard work and uh, believe in whatever they did in their own preparation so it doesn't matter if it's if your opponent is you know some strong player or weak player whatever it is they have to play according to the position that's all that's the ultimate thing you have to do so it doesn't matter uh, if you have if you have made into and it cannot be avoided whether it's uh, 28 under or 16 under it's a match is a match So that's the thing you actually so i think you have to believe in yourself so 
yeah and guys uh, please send us if you have any questions uh, i will make sure to ask them to karthikeyan and mm-hmm. yeah hi rahul hi pra- pravin and uh, yeah hi tanmay and uh, okay coming to since okay i forgot the question right now wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah actually yeah so coming to that again like um, for example like it is very difficult to be confident whenever uh, you are facing you know failure after failure or you know if mm-hmm. you, you are having inconsistent results then um, sometimes you lose confidence on yourself so yeah. um, how do you deal with that mm-hmm. uh, i i think i just I okay mentally you will be down but I think you have to just believe yourself just, uh, I remember uh, before winning the second prize in Gibraltar I played uh, nationals in uh, Jammu and Kashmir and Delhi Delhi Open I didn't play well in nationals I think I lost around 18 points there and uh, in Delhi I lost something like 10 or something like that so i was really down mentally and i was missing i was missing most of the right and uh, even my calculation went down like eventually you know my game like my how to say my level went down so uh, before going to gibraltar i made up my mind that okay uh, i have to be confident to perform well in this tournament because uh, gibraltar is a very strong field for you know sir and i before going to gibraltar tournament i made up my mind that i am a very strong player i can calculate moves uh, very well something like this i gave motivational i know the motivational things to myself before playing the tournament because uh, if you are playing in a very bad state i think you will uh, end up in uh, making some bad moves in the game so i was mentally ready for the tournament and uh, okay initially the first uh, the winning the starting phase was not well I think the first half I did do well, and uh, once I uh, once I lost Nakamura, I thought okay, I have to win every round. So, uh, <laughs> from that, I mean, I from the next round I have to win every game because in Nakamura I had very good position, but I screwed up and uh, I lost that game. So somehow I got uh, angry after losing that game, and eventually I won all the rounds. I don't know how it happened. It was miracle. It was miracle. yeah yeah that is really g- great uh, that uh, motivational like a self uh, yeah. i don't know what it's called like you are just saying to yourself that you are uh, i mean you can play good moves yeah. and so on so yeah that is very mm-hmm. interesting and uh, uh, since you brought uh, gibraltar matter like siddhant asked a question siddhant mm-hmm. mohapatra and he wanted okay. to know your mindset before facing uh, vacher lagreb and you you played the najrov which is like uh, everyone knows that vachal agrav is um, like very strong in najrov and he is usually very well prepared but uh, you mm-hmm. played this bishop e3 uh, the i mean the main line of uh, this english uh, defense against uh, najrov so what was your um, mindset like were you scared or like he was asking that uh yeah okay, i was not scared but uh I don't know how to say. It. Like I was uh, even okay with the draw, some something like this. Because uh, the previous round, I think I played with uh, Matilda Kau, and uh, it was a very long game. Like yeah, you know, I was uh, obviously winning uh, the middle game itself, but I somehow didn't uh, show a good technique. And okay, I still I was winning, but uh, it was a very long game. So after that, I think uh, it was already late. Late at night, I think it was around nine thirty already, and uh, I went back to room and I slept. So I didn't think about the next round. I know I I will be playing with the MBL. So I just uh, had a good sleep and uh, I started preparing in the morning. I didn't have much time. I think I had around one hour and a half hours of preparation. So I just thought that okay, I will just go for some safe line, and uh, if it plays well, then I think I have to accept the draw and come back. so that was my mindset i didn't like you know i have this uh, like I, i have to win something like this i was uh, ready for draw as well because okay easy i'm here like i think i i was like you know i should not uh, overpush the question 
like i should not uh, let's say if it's a equal question i thought like okay if it's a equal question then i should take a cross something like this so i was like in this mindset and uh, okay i don't know why i chose bishop e3 somehow i forgot this knight c4 line my aim was to you know not to go into complicated questions but somehow it uh, went like that but he made a mistake so after that i think uh, it was good for me so my thing is like uh, i don't want to get into complicated questions i want to play safe and if it's uh, now it's in rather that was my mindset yeah that is great and um okay and so like uh, and coming to uh, like a different topic uh, like inconsistent results uh, okay i already touched little bit but anyway let's come back to that again in like okay. some people have inconsistent results like uh, they are stuck in in the same rating let's say 2200 or you know 2400 or mm. Uh, you know 2500 whatever rating like they are stuck in the same rating for a long time let's say 2 3 years or something so mm. what do you think they should do differently in order to go to the next level uh i think uh, first is like they have to come out of the comfort zone like uh, for example let's say if a defender is playing some uh, Let's say only one or two openings against a specific setup. Let's say for D4, let's see if it plays only in so. Uh, let's say for for D4, it plays only in C and something like this. I think you have to come out of that. Like let's say you have to prepare two D4, uh, like three to four setups like that. So I'm just giving an example for that. Like you have to come out of the comfort zone first, and then. Second thing is like you have to identify your weakness and you have to accept it. Now most people if they won't accept their weakness, uh, somehow they feel like okay I'm very good at it. Why I should think like it's my weakness something like this? Or let's say oh, I am I'm okay at it. Why should I you know improve that area? So something like this, and you have to accept the fact of your uh, style or play, and you have to you know uh, you have to let's say if you are very bad at uh, calculation, but you can calculate reasonably well. Let's say something like this. I have to accept that okay, my calculation. I have to improve my calculation more, and I have to work more on that. You cannot say you cannot say that okay, my calculation is good. Let me consider it on other areas, not like that. So I have to cal- uh, consider. I have to concentrate on uh, on every areas. That's my point. Yeah, and uh, like uh, this question is related to this inconsistency, and like for some people they work hard but uh, they don't get the results. and um, yeah and uh, one person was telling me that he works a decent amount of time and uh, but still he is not getting the results and why do you think uh, the what do you think is the reason and uh, and probably the answer is the one i think you gave so like yeah you can yeah. just tell about that that's so different like uh, i will say that uh, okay Let's say if they put like let's say enough amount of time in the chess, and still if they don't get any result, I think then there is something wrong. One is that I will say they are not, they are not uh, planning their work. Maybe. For now, let's say if they want to, you know, okay, let's say they are working on chess, but if they don't have a good plan or something like this, then I think uh, that's just a uh, waste of time in my opinion. Because let's say if someone is uh, very bad at uh, uh, let's say for end game, let's say like this, and if the person is, is just seeing a positional chess and is working on that for let's say two to three hours a day and uh, focusing focusing on openings, but uh, he fails to work on end games, then I think uh, my opinion is uh, it's just a waste of time putting on position, putting on strength alone. I I see most of the people, you know, uh, they'll be working on only on their comfort zones. Like let's say if someone is strong on in game, they'll be working on in game only. They won't concentrate on other areas. Like they they won't give importance to other areas. So uh, this is the problem I see in most of the players. Like they are not ready to come out of their comfort zone. So if you're not ready to do that, I think even if you work like six to eight hours a day, I think uh, that's not uh, going to work for you. 
So, my thing is like you have to come out of comfort zone in order to progress. Yeah, yeah. that's good and uh, like coming to some problems uh, uh with the chess like uh, people have uh, time trouble issues so mm-hmm. how to deal with those kind of problems uh, uh i think you have to just work on it that's all i can't give a specific explanation for this uh if you ask some specific problems then i can give but if you have, if that's generally i think you have to work on it plan and work like how, how do you plan and work on time trouble like how to get rid of time trouble okay. Okay, time, in case of time trouble i think first thing is uh, you have to make note of uh, i mean you have to make note of the uh, make note of how much time you're taking specific positions first uh, and as, uh, first at uh, first i think uh, during my engage for studies i will take around 15 to 20 minutes for a study but nowadays it's almost like two to three minutes that's all mm, okay. so i think uh, first you have to make note of uh, the time you're taking in the specific positions let's say uh, uh, for some people you know in complicated positions they won't know what to do something like this or where to invest the time so at that uh, in those uh, areas the people will be consuming more time and they will be they land in time trouble so i would say that uh, yeah, yeah you can just see your own games like the games which you played and uh, you will get an idea like uh, where i am taking so much time like is it in game or is it middle game or is it in the opening or is it like in the dry positions or is it in the complicated position so you will get a pattern and then you have to work on it i think uh, i don't have any other answer yeah that's really a great advice like noting down and figuring out where you are spending so much time and yeah. working on it yeah that's really great and uh, coming to like i have seen some of your interviews where you talk a lot about uh, the use of cloud engines and you mm-hmm. have also told me personally that um, uh, kids like pragnananda and many others like they have improved uh, very quickly because of cloud engines so mm-hmm. why is that like what is what does cloud engines do like how, how is it helpful to humans i mean <laughs> players uh, no i am not saying that they improved just because of cloud engines of course they are talented as well but i, I what i say is that the scope, the scope has improved like you know in those days uh, for openings i think i will be referring eco something like that and in eco most of the things will be you know uh, i think it will be outdated something like this but with cloud engines you know you can uh, trust those things because it's uh, super fast and uh, it's reliable and uh, i think the scope uh, the main thing is the scope as improved like in the late you let's say in terms of uh, tournaments there are more tournaments now in uh, abroad during my times i think it was like two to three tournaments something like this so nowadays if you go everywhere the new tournament happening and uh, also in terms of analysis the, the technology has improved so uh, now this uh, for the upcoming players they have most opportunities so that's why i think uh, it's like uh, now this kids are uh, becoming strong faster compared to our old times yeah and uh, again cloud uh, cloud engines like how to uh, exactly work uh, with cloud engines like how to prepare openings and also relating to that like how much time should be spent on openings is one of the questions uh, like one of my friend asked yeah uh, openings uh, i think i can depends upon your strength as well like your strength and weaknesses so uh i think main the cloud engines i will be using for openings for drill game and in game i think uh, i want to use cloud engines because uh, most okay in terms of calculation or let's say if it's a precise uh, line or variation then i would uh, uh, take it for cloud engine if i can't solve on, solve it on my own but in openings i i think i uh, i mainly use it for openings uh just for you know you know you will get more ideas something like this but in real game and in game i think uh, i don't use cloud engines as well 
and uh, openings i think first you need to you know uh, first get an understanding of the position first then to use the for other things yeah and uh, yeah like uh, about that openings part like people should people focus so much uh, on openings or like uh, even without studying uh, that much opening you can uh, i mean get away uh, i think at the initial stage you need not see much opening uh, okay that's what i was doing to me the reason is like you know those days people didn't have access to you know proper preparation like they mostly refer books and uh, encyclopedias and like this so i think uh, due to that uh, i was not uh, concentrating more on openings i was uh, seeing the end games meeting during my engage and uh, but if you ask me opinion nowadays i think uh, it's not uh, working that way because nowadays people have access to cloud engines as well so they will be prepared in the in terms of opening as well so i think nowadays uh, you have to consider an opening uh, let's say uh, my opinion will be like till uh, 2000 Uh, you need not worry about openings much, but uh, after the some stage like 2000, I think you need to consider consider an opening as well. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's a good advice. Uh, and like, there are also like opening books, and there are also many databases online, like modern chess databases, and I'm sure there are many others online. so like do you follow them or like would you recommend anyone to buy openings books opening books or you know databases online where you know many strong players have uh, prepared it for us uh yeah i, I would uh, strongly recommend that but uh, i think uh, most of the thing it says say you will get it in the cloud things as well like if you uh, work work correctly uh my uh, if i if you ask me honest opinion i think i would buy that mainly you know for understanding like how do they think the opening like mainly for the understanding of the ideas and all not uh, for the uh, not for the you know deep idea, deep deep uh, variations something like that because deep variations here really in the cloud in the so basically uh, i would suggest to buy those things for understanding and getting you know they say say something yeah and uh, okay uh, and about classical games like do you uh, constantly see classical games or have you like in childhood years like have you seen games of uh, you know the past world champions or you know the classical games and uh, uh, how is it uh, like how did it uh, impact you like yeah yeah classical of course classics are necessary because you need to know how how the game was before they were born like how it was decorated in the golden era something like this so i think it is important to know the classics because you will get an understanding of the game like how it was before the technology uh, before the technology came in and how it is after the technology made it made its uh, effect so i think it's really important to know the classics like how they prepared for the game how they understood the position like how they found out this and like this and also uh, i would be seeing i still see classics like i will see kapo games and uh, i will see games of kaspro as well so i think it's really important to see classics to get understanding and like come yeah yeah because those days there were no engine people people was people were playing like purely on based on understanding so classics i really see for uh, you know understanding and uh, getting more ideas like for uh, some ideas you won't even think like uh, i remember in some day carpo played some move like chess yes sir just to close the fight yeah and, against sanzikar i think yeah yeah so, I don't, I don't, I am not familiar uh, with the names, but I just know the ideas. So you know, you will get all these ideas. Like you will get the understanding. So I won't recommend classics for uh, deep analysis and like this. 
yeah and like as we were talking about classical games like who is your favorite player and why uh i think it's uh, arpo because he's very good at grading like you know uh, playing with the smart advantages and touching the opponents okay that's interesting and like how do you like summarize your style um like currently overall I think if I, I think if I think it's a secret. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll, okay, we'll keep it a secret. And yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, like, yeah. So, uh, and uh, since we are done with classical games, like, and now nowadays, you know, there are so many strong engines coming up, like, you know, Stockfish, Leela, you know, Alpha Zero, and many other uh, engines, uh, strong engines have come. and uh, do you follow this engine games uh, or uh, would you recommend people to watch this in engine games and try to you know uh, learn something from those games yeah of course i think uh, okay of course uh, engines uh, think way uh, deeper than us and, uh, <laughs> and i have found very interesting ideas uh, Same uh, uh, engines. Game. I mean, the way which engines play. Like uh, I, I think I have seen this uh, one specific game. I don't remember. This uh, Alpha Zero will just uh, yeah okay uh, get uh, get the stockfish the coin on its head. It will be some zinzuan. It will be a, uh, Alpha Zero will be exchanged on, but it will get some zinzuan in middle game push. Yeah, it played many I exciting think. games. So I'm not sure. Maybe yeah. it's in some Queen's Indian or something. I, I'm just. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember the opening, but I remember the question. The starfish uh, will have one GA coin on its head. Ah, okay. And pawn something like this. So I mean, it's uh, it will be you know uh, you will get it will it's a new perspective for the game itself. Like how engines think. And now it uh, creates more ideas, which is you know, which is very shocking for humans. So I think I would recommend to see uh, people to see engine building as well, so that you get more uh, more ideas and more uh, you know shocking uh, things as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, coming to books, do you re- read many chess books? Uh, and uh, if you do read like what would you recommend for the viewers uh, uh i nowadays i'm not reading uh, books uh, much no you know due to this uh, prohibition stuff but those days i, I mainly uh, i was mainly depending on books so i would say i can just tell the books which i have read in my young age uh i think it was imagination in chess for middle game and the unique pawn structures and i think there was uh, uh i forgot the name things power chess program something like this oh okay power chess yeah. yeah these were some books i referred for middle game for end game it was how to play chess and it was how to play chess endings by uh ंग yeah and uh, since you brought the end game end game topic like many people uh, don't uh, like even very strong grandmasters they don't uh, uh, focus on theoretical end games like they just uh, some people they they have never seen uh, theoretical end games so would you advise uh, viewers to like focus on theoretical end games that much yeah of course i will say that Because theoretical games is important as well, so I think it's important to you know know the theories first. For example, of course you have to know King Pawn says King how to make a trade with that. And also you should know 
okay just an example uh, if uh, you are if, uh, if you are having bishop against the rook and you have to know which corner you have to go with the king something like this i'm just telling some example yeah. so you have to uh, you have to know all these things let's say if you get it in the game you need, you need not think and waste the time like some people have this uh, assumption that like we don't get end games that much in our games so we can get away without even studying it so what would you like to say okay. to you guys hardly you will how much you will you spend like let's say for one day if you spend an hour it won't cost you much if you like i mean uh, there's no nothing to lose right if you spend time on that uh, those end games yeah yeah exactly yeah. Like say for example, you have to. I mean, you have to know the strike skill, right? Like uh, double knights against the single pawn, and if you're blocking that pawn, you have to know how to corner the king, something like this. Yes. Okay, you can argue that uh, I won't get uh, in games like that, but let's say if you get, like recently you got a question in Arya Nas game. So let's say if you get, then you have to know how to handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. and okay and coming to uh, like another question is uh, like some people prepare alone like for example i prepare alone individually and uh, you and arvind or let's say pragna and that you guys work in an academy so what would you like what do you think is better is it uh, like uh, working in an uh, i mean uh, practicing in an academy is better than working individually or what is your opinion on that um i i think there's no answer for this because uh, both has its advantages and disadvantages so if you work alone and if you fight let's say it has uh, some advantages and some disadvantages for example if you work alone you will find new ideas and it will be a secret with you but at the same time you will consume more time like uh, if you work alone you will be saying uh, more variations let's say if you work together uh, you are partner will be seeing some other variation you will be seeing some other stuff and you will save more time if you work with some uh, you know uh, people so it has its own advantages and disadvantages so you can't accept it tell which one you should do so you have to figure out which works for you and you have to go with it that's all yeah and uh, coming to your academy like uh, i don't know exact when but i think around uh, i think after 12th you decided to go to ramesh sir's academy right uh, i don't i don't exactly remember the this thing but i remember the year i think it was after baku olympiad i decided to go ah, okay. so anyway Baku-Lipiad. like uh, why did you decide to go to like uh, ramesh sir and like how did it uh, impact you like you have won uh, many strong like you have played you have increased uh, like greatly and uh, what was sir's uh, impression like what did sir do like and how was the experience yeah. of course he is a very good coach and he is a great coach of course he very well knows sir uh, personally uh, okay uh, before going to me going to me i had many problems like in terms of mental strength and as well as chest strength as well so uh, i found it very comfortable and uh, you know somehow it was very comfortable with them you know i will be sharing my problems uh, it was not like that uh, uh, with the others like okay of course they are good as well but i was not feeling comfortable sharing my personal problems like you yeah, i think you get it Yes. So with uh, Ramesh sir, uh, he easily understood the problem, and uh, his suggestions, his uh, suggestions were really awesome. Like it uh, worked on me. So I I started started to feel change. Like uh, I started to feel the you know something uh, started ch- changing in myself. So after joining uh, the Ramesh sir, I think uh, my chest and also got. Uh, very uh, very much uh, you know it improved a lot and also my mental strength it was you know uh, it improved a very great extent yeah and also mm-hmm. like i saw an interview of ramesh sir where he mentioned that like every day gives 10 uh, uh, things to do to his students and like they have to do at least 3 or 4 uh, from that uh, list is that true that information 
<laughs> I I don't know whether I can tell that. No, but uh, he himself think... said in an interview <laughs> that <sort> of... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, he, he didn't say anything like that. No. But he will say something generally. Ah, okay. So no okay. secrets. Uh, <laughs> no secrets. <laughs> okay. I, uh, to me, I think he didn't say anything like that. I mean, every day I have to do this. He knows that I will do stuff which I have to do. So he won't insist on that. Okay. Okay. like i saw this interview in uh, ben johnson's uh, podcast or something like in that he was saying this that he usually gives uh, you know 10 things wh- in which they can do three or four like every student has to do three or four things a day so that's what he said mm-hmm. in that interview <laughs> so i wanted to confirm okay ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay uh, okay i think i can get it like for me you know to me what's uh, not once in the group class he said that okay he won't uh, insist but he uh, will say it as a fact like let's say if you clean your own room without any one self you will get more satisfaction something like this it's, it's not like uh, he is uh, insisting you to do it but he is saying as a fact and uh, okay you and before he said it i will be cleaning my own my room on my own like I'll sweep the floor myself. I'll clean the bed myself. Oh. I'll arrange everything properly. <laughs> so uh, that's the thing. I think that's the thing we're referring. Yeah, that is eye level stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's normal. It's not. It's not. It's not great. I mean, it's not something great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like I think I'm mostly done with the questions. I think. like finally like uh, for um, like uh, like how do you deal with uh, distractions and stuff like there are many distractions like social media is there and you mm. know the, there are many other distractions so how do you deal yeah. with that <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, in, uh, okay it's uh, nowadays it's it may open it's very hard you know to focus on one specific thing uh in my those days there were there were not many things like even the internet was you know the it was at the improving stage so in those days we don't we didn't have much distraction like we don't even have cell phone those in those times i remember i think i i didn't even have a cell phone i i think even only my dad had and he even he had some this basic model of this nokia a something <laughs> so that <laughs> i didn't have much distractions during the young age so somehow it was you know it was easy for me to focus on chess i mean uh, without much distractions okay i had computer but i won't do much in the computer i mean uh, i uh, used to only for chess like okay at those times my cousins you know they would playing video games as well like those times it was a craze but somehow it was not my area so i was just focusing on chess and uh, somehow i feel i felt that there were not many distractions at that time but nowadays you have so many things like social media video games you have, you have everyone has phone even a kid has phone <laughs> so <laughs> so nowadays i feel it's really tough so i think uh, if uh, nowadays uh, you have to be really focused on particular field to uh, become something great in that field it's not an easy task now yeah and uh, i know that like in general you want to become world champion so what do you think it's not very very easy very easy so i think uh, if you ask about the methods i think you and i don't know i'm just practicing normally i will be doing my own stuff and be uh, working on the areas which i have to improve something like this so I even it's really hard for anyone, anyone to say that uh, you know how uh, what to do to reach this level. You just have to do it. That's all. Yeah. You just have to work hard and work smart. That's all. Yeah, that is great. Like now I'm out of questions, and like final mm-hmm. like simple questions. It's uh, I wanted to be it like rapid fire, but uh, there is no fire in the questions. So let's just say it's <laughs> some. <laughs> Okay. Ten questions. <laughs> like you have to ch- choose between uh, two. Okay, the first mm-hmm. one you have already. Okay, I'll just uh, uh, say it. Uh, so, okay. Art, yeah. So, uh, 
do I, do I get time for this? I have to answer immediately. Like, like within see. five or ten seconds, you can take maximum okay. ten seconds. So, hard okay. work or talent? Hard work. Okay, Magnus or Caspro or Fisher? Who is the greatest player? Fisher. Fisher. Okay, table tennis or cricket? Table tennis. <laughs> yeah, I knew you wouldn't uh, pick cricket. <laughs> So, <laughs> under twelve world championship or under sixteen world championship title, which was more satisfying? The sixteen. The sixteen, okay. And same goes for national championship. Like, uh, which one is more special to you? Ah, two thousand fifteen. Okay, and uh, rapid or blitz? Ah, uh, blitz. <laughs> okay, uh, Vijay or Ajit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I knew that answer already. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's all. Like that's all the questions I have. Um, thank you for coming. And okay, let's see if uh, the audience has any questions. Final questions. Okay. So, so first of all, like Shahid Hussain asked, uh, what is the best book of calculation and positional play? Around fifteen uh, hundred hello player. Calculation. Uh, calculation. I think you yeah, need to solve studies. Doesn't matter which book you take. I solve from in-game challenge. I mean, calculation in the sense, if you want to calculate complicated positions, or let's say if you want to calculate some dynamic positions, I think you need to work on studies and stuff to improve your uh, calculation. And uh, uh, studies in the sense, like you know, the you have to work on the positions where you have to calculate. Uh, to you know uh, get the ideas and uh, for positional play mm, i don't i can i don't have an answer for that for positional play i think uh, I, th- i was just referring uh, like in like i said like i was referring imagination in chess because i think <laughs> positional play I for had, imagine sorry imagination in chess for positional play i yeah i think it, uh, it's mainly For yeah, I thought it was like calculation. You need to find the winning. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no. Okay, it could be. But I know, as far as I remember, I think it was for middle game, like uh, I guess the middle game. So I would say positional play. I think it's for middle game. and how uh, to play against the isolated pawns and like this okay so any book it's any book it's you know you have to put effort for that and so it just be that you have to get the this professional treat that in there and really and uh, yeah since you mentioned about studies i want i suddenly got a question like uh, some people like like me they like we don't solve uh, studies that much like instead we i try to solve uh, you know calculation puzzles or something like long calculation because like uh, what i used to think is that like studies never come in a uh, in a normal game so like and also it's kind of difficult <laughs> so, so i never <laughs> so i i okay. never uh, um one second yeah so i never uh, you know focused on that so like how um, uh, do you what do you think about that uh yeah what to say to us right you want to get those specific, those kind of questions in a uh, you know, normal game but the thing is that uh, it's not uh, it's not the position it's the way you you know the way you calculate the way you take a decision the way you find the most that's the thing which matters Okay, normal game. Uh, you won't get any uh, creative positions. Like, I think you get my point. Like, in studies, you'll uh, you'll also have more creativity in those uh, studies and all. And also in normal game, uh, you'll you can easily see the pattern. Like, let's say if you take a knight off, you know that uh, main idea, main idea is to play rook to c3. in normal game you you can you already know the pattern but in studies you don't know that there there will be some unusual ideas something like this so you will get uh, more used to those ideas as well uh, 
So my thing is, my way I start studies is, you know, uh, personally it increases my confidence, and I yeah, I see more ideas in studies, like more uh, the ideas which say you don't see in normal games. So mainly for my confidence and my and for my calculation, and uh, you know for the creativity and uh, some unusual ideas as well. Yeah, so I should I should start uh, solving studies then I guess. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> so Endgame Challenge is the book you recommend, right? Okay, yeah, any book which has studies. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, Shiv Shome is asking, what is the secret of calculating at a god level? <laughs> <laughs> just I just uh, overthought it. Yeah. And, I think like secret. and uh, okay, Bal Chandra Prasad is asking, um, how much time do you spend on openings nowadays? Uh, nowadays, uh, I would spend around uh, two hours a day in openings, and uh, two hours on post uh, with game and two hours on game. That's my agenda. Okay. So yeah, I guess that's all. Okay, Sham Sundar Anna is saying. Uh, okay, <laughs> he, he has not seen me preparing alone, <laughs> but okay, I do it See? in home. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is he referring? Like me, me, who? me. Like I said, ah, I okay. prepare alone, <laughs> right? Like individually. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I think you and I didn't see much in uh, Barcelona. <laughs> What what I didn't hear. What did you say? No, I mean you are. I didn't see you preparing much in Barcelona. Yeah. Me, you and that one like you, me and Arsha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in tournaments I try to watch movies or do other <laughs> stuff. <laughs> okay. And uh, okay. Ari Aran is saying straight a line ko va karthi en distraction en na en na. Okay, so I I understood. Uh, I think you understood uh, what distractions usually are. So I think the answer could yeah. be answered by yourself. So that is the answer. And uh, one new question came. So Pranav is asking how many puzzles fourteen hundred federated should solve every day to improve. Hi, there's no count for that. I think it's just. Uh, what you learn from the process so it's not like if you solve two puzzles a day i will do something like that it's not like that just you have to learn from the positions you solve like okay from this position i learn about uh, uh, this thing and if you fail to find a move you can uh, unless like why did you fail to find that move why you didn't find like is it a complicated move or is it a silent move something like this So there's nothing like uh, if you do this much puzzles in a day, you only do nothing like that. It's the that's it's the learning which you take from those things. Even if you solve other puzzles without uh, learning, it uh, is just a waste of time. If you solve five puzzles with uh, like you know understanding and thing, I think that's also enough. So it's just the uh, learning which you take from those uh, positions. Okay, so that's all I guess. Uh... the questions so kartikeyan thanks for coming like uh, i have learned a lot personally and i thanks. also think <laughs> and i al- i also think the viewers uh, some of the viewers learned okay now mm-hmm. i think they are not watching uh, but hopefully later i think they will watch because uh, now is uh, now the ipl has started so probably many people ah, are not yeah. watching <laughs> so anyway i'll make sure like many people watch this video i think this was very educational they got to know your journey and like your work ethic and also your opinions on many topics so mm-hmm. thanks for coming on the show i thanks, o- i hope uh, you. you also uh, didn't get bored and <laughs> you answered uh, oh, no, of course it was very good yes so of course i i happy that i shared my experience with you yeah so thank you guys for watching uh, 